Hallelujah. Awesome worship. Yeah. I love worship. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise, praise, praise. It, it, you come away from singing that, you know, and, and almost, I just want to keep singing. <laughs> but let my words, Lord, hallelujah, let my words and let the teaching be an honor to you and a praise of you and your Amen. glory. Hallelujah. R-T-M. <coughs> three letters, three initials, and these are at the heart, these are at the core of what Victory Churches International is about. Yep. And they're right behind me. R-T-M. Reach, teach, mobilize. I love that. Reach, yep. teach, mobilize. I can remember that. <laughs> it's a good vision. Three words in a nutshell. Now, there's more to it. And, and, and it's good that we, we get to know what Victory Churches International is all about. After all, we're part of the family. Yep. Bless Pastor George and bless Pastor Hazel. They adopted our church into this family. We're adopted children in this church family. Hallelujah. And it's been a blessing from the moment we said, yes, please adopt us, and they agreed. It's been a blessing. It really has. We, we know there's been a flow of the Spirit. There's been provision and just purpose and vision. Hallelujah. Just being connected to this vision <laughs> to reach, teach, and mobilize. And we can be a part of this. Now, I'm going to read this out because... Pastors George and Aislaw in front of me, so they'll know these, <laughs> these things. Victory Churches International urges us to evangelize. Yep. Just speaking to a lady in the break who evangelizes. Just simply meeting people. Yeah. And the aim is to reach, there we go, reach every available person at every available time. By every available means with what? The gospel. the gospel of Christ. Hallelujah. The gospel of Christ, of no other. Amen. Yeah, amen. Now, some evangelists, they preach crusades. You know, they, gather, they just have this gift, this grace to gather hundreds and thousands of people. They can talk to them and people give their lives, give their hearts. There are those who street evangelize. Yeah. You know, they're quite comfortable in speaking with strangers, going out, laying hands, healing the sick. That's another calling. There's also befriending, I suppose, you know, coming alongside people and just revealing who Christ is yes. in us. Now, last week we had Pastor George and Pastor Hazel with us for the Faith Adventurers Conference in Stoke-on-Trent. And I was really blessed because as we spent some time with them, Pastor George mentioned something else. There's also apologetic evangelists and I thought, hallelujah, Lord, because I'm not a crusader, and I really struggle with the street evangelism. Befriending, yeah, you know, I see that. But I thought, that's where I'm at. Yeah. You know, so when people have questions about the Lord, or want to debate about issues of Christianity, the Lord has stirred up in me and provided a grace to help people an- answer yeah. and receive answers for those questions. Praise the Lord. You know, it's not my responsibility what they do with that. It's the Holy Spirit and them that work together and receive it in their hearts. I looked in the Bible, just at a couple of places in the book of Acts, because I thought, is that in, you know, is that in the Bible? I want to know that these things are based upon the Word. And it is. Philip was encouraged by the Holy Spirit to go to the eunuch who was traveling in a chariot, in a carriage, and he came up alongside him, and he says, what are you reading? Because he could see he was reading a scroll. He was reading Isaiah. And he said, do you understand what you're reading? He says, how can I? Unless somebody explains this. And he got up, sat with him, and went through it. Apologetics. Yeah. He had his questions. He gave the answers. Result, he'd reached him. He was saved. That's Hallelujah. Amen. Another time, Paul is in a synagogue in a certain town. And for three months, he's in there debating with people. Receiving their questions, giving his answers for three months. Now, after a while, some people get quite cross with him and probably see that, really, we haven't got answers to his, what he's saying. And people are seeing that he's speaking the truth. And people get jealous of that. And anyway, they, they end up speaking evil of him, cursing him publicly, not just in that space that he was in. And so he leaves. He doesn't stay. But then for two years in a school, in a lecture hall, he sets up a place to teach and continue teaching people. But he took with him, the point is, he took with him disciples. 
So that says that while he was debating in the synagogue, people got saved. Because he couldn't have taken disciples with him unless people got saved. So apologetic evangelism. Hallelujah. Now, (laughs) this brings me to a real... It's exciting. (laughs) Exciting testimony for me. This is a really exciting testimony. So Sunday we had the morning session of the Faith Adventurers Conference. And then later on that day... In the afternoon, I got a phone call, and it was off my son, my eldest son, Jake. He's an adult, and uh, he was all excited on the phone, and he says, Dad, he's a, by the way, he's a painter and decorator, and he says, Dad, I'm working currently in a church. Now, this church is not a Christian church. They call themselves church, but this denomination is not Christian. But he says, I'm working in this place, call themselves a church, he says, and I don't feel right. He says, it's wrong. He says, the whole atmosphere, it's not right. So, cool. And um, he says, and I got speaking to the leader there. And I said, my dad says. <laughs> <laughs> he put the blame on me. <laughs> he says, my dad says, that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Right. That's it. Yep. I said, that's right, son. That's what it says in the Bible, so I'm not going to change the word of God. And uh, he says, he didn't like that. <laughs> he says, oh, we've got, got to do some other things as well. I said, oh, that's great, son. He says, you know, Dad, I've been thinking. And what had been happening, he, said, he, he was telling me that since um, we'd left the building that we're in, so our Victory Church in Stoke-on-Trent has had to leave the building that we've had for three years. Various reasons, I don't need to get into that here. Well, um, the Lord told us anyway and agreed with us, go. And so we had to leave that place. And part of leaving that place and part of moving from anywhere is you need to get all the furnishings and all the equipment, take it to somewhere new. We didn't actually have a new place at this time, so we took it to storage. And my son, bless him, he came along and he says, I'll help you. And from the moment the the last meeting ended to late, late in the evening, he was helping take this stuff down and put it in a garage. And he was working with my deacon, Brett. And Brett apparently worked this out. And he says, Carl, it was five hours that we were together, me and your son, five hours. And Brett was talking about his faith. Brett was talking with Jake about Christ and getting to know him as well and befriend him. Now, before this, I've worked with Jake in the building that we had. He's a painter and decorator. And... Bl- Bless him, you know? My son worked hard all day and then would come in the evening with me and we'd paint these walls, which is double the height of the ceiling in here. And, and together he'd help me work on the church. And again, during that time, I'd put some worship music on. If he'd got any questions about the faith, I'd talk to him. And he used to even, get this, <laughs> evangelize to the guys he was working with <laughs> while he was painting and decorating. Not saved. But he was telling them the truth. <laughs> it's a, I told him, it's about grace, Dad. I said, that's right. It's about grace. He said, I told him, you don't have to do anything. You just have to believe. It's hallelujah. I thought, why isn't he saved then? <laughs> but anyway, this phone call, to get back to that, was he, he said he'd been thinking all the time since he'd been with Brett. Since that time, he'd stripped down the church. He says, I couldn't stop thinking about it, Dad. I said... And I'm not very happy with some of the things I'm doing in my life. Wow. And he says, in fact, my, my girlfriend, um, you know, it, she, she's not sure about Jesus Christ herself. And that, that concerns me. I thought, oh, wow. I thought, I tell you, I thought, if, he's fe- if this is how he feels inside, this is evidence of being born again. Mm-hmm. I said to him, son, do you believe Jesus Christ as Lord? He said, yes, I do, Dad. I said, you believe he died and rose again? Hallelujah. For your sins, so that you can be one with God and saved. He says, yeah. I said, you're saved, son. Hallelujah. So last week, my eldest son got saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After the Great Adventist Conference. Apologetic evangelism. He'd constantly had questions answered, and his heart was opened in a way to receive the Holy Spirit. Not from me, but what a pleasure 
And what a privilege for a father to be there in that moment. And, yeah. and you know, it's so simple. And I know there's others who'd say, oh, well, he didn't say this prayer, or you should, has he done this? Oh, come on. Yeah, amen, Carl. You know, you know what? If, if you're a fisherman, you're glad that you've got the fish. <laughs> oh, you know, you know, if you soft the hook and on the bank, you've got the fish. Hallelujah. It doesn't... That's it. <laughs> but, uh, whether it's a tiddler as well or a big one. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, that brings me, though, to the second part there, teach. Because now my son, and pray for him, his name's Jake, um, he now needs a second step. So he's been reached. But um, Victory Church is urges now to disciple. Amen. To teach. To teach believers. To establish them in a local church. And I'm passionate about that. It grieves me, you know, when believers just separate themselves yeah, from church yeah, community. Yeah. Mm. I just know the enemy can have his way. Yeah. I've seen those wildlife programs, you know, where the young ones yeah, and the yeah, weak ones are on the edge of the herd and they get taken. Yes, they do. Yeah. And that's a picture for us. Um, we're called for discipleship. Hallelujah. Teaching and training people to become like Christ. They've received the gospel of Christ. And now we teach them to be like Christ. And however, if someone's been saved, crusade, street, befriending, apologetic, they all need discipleship. That's the next step. And that's something we're passionate, well, Victory Church is international is passionate about, and it's why we set up Bible College in our church for those who really want to seriously get into the Word of God and know themselves in Christ. We set up free courses for discipleship for those who can't perhaps afford and give the time for that Bible college. And also, just briefly, part of me, and, and Pastor George was on about this, about creativity. The Lord inspired me. He says, Carl, write a course. I wanted to write a discipleship course to understand what had happened when you saved, but in a language that I understood. It was plain and simple. And so I came up with the Renew course. Amen. It's just simply eight weeks. takes people through the steps, and we've led people through this. And this is a real useful tool. Homegrown in Victory Churches. Hallelujah. So this is Victory Course. You go on lulu.com or put in a search in Google for Victory Course at Renew Course by Carl Scott. It will come up on your Google search if you want to look at that. Yeah. That brings me to Mobilize. Hallelujah. Victory Churches International urges us to deploy believers. Mobilize is like a military term. Yeah, deploy Get you ready for action. Place you in the position that you're meant to be in. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And we're not all meant to be in one position. Also, the enemy can attack from somewhere else and we're all over here. You see? You've got to be in the right place for your calling. And as a pastor, that's what I'm looking for. Well, what's the calling in someone? What do I see? How can I draw that out of them? Or give them some experiences and help them develop that calling in their life? Not for me. You know, if someone's a better pastor than me and that's who we're raising up, take me place then. Let the Lord send me to somewhere else or do something else. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's not about a position. That's right. that's but yeah. the Lord's equip me and give grace for me to help Wonderful. people do that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, mobilize the army of God. See? Yeah. That's in the Victory Church's purpose. Yeah. Mobilize the army of God to help each person find his or her place and function in the body of Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, Jesus said that the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. Against the revelation that we're saved through faith in Jesus Christ, that we receive Christ in us, that we become believers, his body on earth. That revelation, that rock of knowledge, the gates of hell cannot prevail against. Now, let me, that's in uh, Matthew 16. Amen. But do you know what? That's not about how coming to hammer and batter on our gates. That's about the church battering Hal's gates, you know. That's about, it says their gates cannot prevail. Hallelujah. Their gates cannot prevail. As we bring our battering ram of faith, they cannot prevail. The realm of Hal, the Satan's realm, because Hal is where he's destined for. That's all that he's got. Hal, actually. And anything else he has is a lie or he steals it and takes it by force. And we don't have to allow that. We have the power in us together 
as we reach, teach and mobilize together and get deployed to batter down what Hal's taken. And what a day to be saying this when we've got a national day of prayer yeah, in our right. capital city. That's right. Do not let the darkness come and take Amen. what the light is so Amen. graciously given and freely given. There's always a cost. You know, I've spent some time in my life where I've tried to walk away <laughs> from a relationship with God. I wasn't being discipled, but I'm not going to blame others because I had choice in it. But you know, it's, there's a cost and it's damaging, it's hurting, it hurts others. I don't want that for anyone. I want to go to Genesis 26 and just, yeah, look at this. The Holy Spirit impressed this upon me. And just this week, and um, yeah, I want to spend some time there. Genesis 26, from verse 17, we'll go to 22. I think, they've, yeah, you've got that. Then Isaac, this is about Isaac, departed from there and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar. Oh, Gerar! <laughs> <laughs> Go have some fun, you know, when you read the Bible. In the valley of Gerar, and it, it, it means the place of rolling hills, or dwelling place. Uh, in the valley of Gerar, and he dwelt there. And Isaac dug again the wells of water which they had dug in the days of Abraham, his father, for the Philistines to stop them up. This is what the enemy does. Yeah, stops up the flow of water, life-giving water. Stopped up after the death of Abraham, and he called them by the names which his father had called them. Honor, honor to those who'd gone before him. We were blessed to be in a building that was built for the glory of God, and you'd see plaques and the people. I didn't know the people, but I was honored to be a part of standing on their shoulders and being in a place that they built for the glory of God and using it for the glory of God. And I still believe it will be. Let me tell you, a prophetic word has gone out that that place is God's. And even if we're not there, somebody else or we'll go back and we will take it for God. At this time, we're just being repossessioned, regrouped, deployed elsewhere. Amen. Also, verse 19, Isaac served and stood in the valley and found a well of running, oh sorry, uh, yeah, found a well of running water there. New wells. Victory Church is international. And my own passion is that, you know, we've done things in the past and there are things that need reviving, yeah. things that need restoring from the past, but then this should always be pressing forward for yes. new, yes. you know? I, I, I was reading the um, Adventure and uh, Revival. And, Romance. romance. <laughs> Don't forget the romance. I'm so, <laughs> apologize. <laughs> and, um, you know, in there it was talking of a certain time in Victory Church's history. One church a week around the world. Yeah. That, this exponential growth was happening. And hallelujah, I took that and I thought, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's get that one, one a week, one a day. Hallelujah even. Yeah. Let's think big. God says think big and I can do more. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we need new. So they dig new wells, not just go back to the old stuff. But what happened? The herdsmen of Gerar quarreled. They strived and contended. They quarreled with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water's ours. Really? So he called the name of the well Essek, which means strife, because they quarreled with him. Did they stay there where they was quarreling? Did they stay there where there was strife? You know, bring up a legal case, get together. Our guys are bigger than your guys. We'll sort it out. No. What happened? They dug another well. They weren't put off. This is quite poignant. It's quite important for us at our time because we've been moved on from an old, a well that we've dug. You know, but I haven't got to go back. It says dig a new one here. It says... They, um, hallelujah. they dug another well oh, and they quarreled over that one also so he called its name Sitna enmity, accusation you see how the enemy works accusing, enmity contention, strife and striving it's not a good place that's not living did they stay there and continue the quarrel? no Oh, by the way, when they got to Sitna, <laughs> this word for quarreling isn't just about words, you know. 
there, there was some five-fold ministry in there as well. <laughs> it's physical. Yeah, because it gets to a place where words that get louder and louder, and then there's only another result, which is physical. They got physical over this one, but they didn't stay there. They moved away. Hallelujah. I hope that's a picture of church. <laughs> and he moved them from there and dug another well. Third time. And they did not quarrel Amen. over it. They'd give up. You know what? Leave the enemy with the remnants. Leave the enemy with our leftovers and what we've left behind. Let's go for something new and better. Because our God says he's a grace God and it's abundantly above and beyond all we can Amen. ask or imagine. Amen. Hallelujah. So let them have a, a mess over, you know, what we've left behind. They'll say, oh, we've got something good and we've destroyed you. No, you haven't, because ours is a grace God. One, two, three. They would have gone on. And I will. Let me tell you, I will. And I can go on because we've got people like Pastor George and Pastor Hazel, Will and Barbie, who will cheer us on Amen. in our road to victory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So they did not quarrel and they called its name Rehoboth. Wide spaces. Freedom, openness. For now the Lord has made room for us and we shall, or not we may, okay, we shall be fruitful in the land. How did this fruitfulness come about? It was freedom from contention and strife and quarreling and enmity and battling. When you're away from that, there's freedom and fruitfulness. Yes. Isn't that awesome? I want to be in a place of fruitfulness. Amen. So I know if I'm in a place of quarreling, that's not a fruitful place. Move on. Move on. Move on. It's sometimes better, sadly, it's sometimes better for Christian brothers and sisters just to separate a while rather than be contending against each other. It's not the right way, yeah. I believe. And there is restoration sometimes after time apart. Your heart can mend from words and actions. Hallelujah. But the, let's have a look at this, because David knew this in the Psalms. Um, there's two. Psalms 18, 18 to 19. They confronted me on the day of my calamity. This is like Isaac and his men. But the Lord was my support. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Support lifted him up. He also brought me out into a broad place yes. a wide space room you know what the enemy wants to box you in to keep you under oppression strife lies fear stress and it's like a room and a prison that holds you in that place you do not have to stay there that's a lie greater yes. is he who is in us than is in the world Boom! open it wide and be in the broad space which is freedom 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 and on and on. Because God's freedom is not just one freedom. It's on and on and on. Hallelujah. And it's the place of fruitfulness when we break free of that mindset and being oppressed by the situations and the people around us. Look at this other psalm. Um, 31. Psalm 31. In verse 8. You've not shut me up into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a wide place. That piece of scripture was important to us. It was a speech, piece of scripture which led us to the last place, the last location that we're at. And we stepped into that place. And I think it's in the King James Version. It's a room, big, large room. And we were actually in the building and it was a large room. It was a wide space. There was no pews. All the pews had been removed. We were in a wide space. I'm telling you this because... This is how God says, I can do abundantly more than you imagine. Amen. I imagined that was the answer to that scripture and that word for us, that wide room. But actually, I realize now, no, <laughs> it's, it's, that, that's the first step, but there's more. Be free, be free, be free to multiply and increase and have the boundary and the tent pegs stretched out further and further. Hallelujah. Awesome. I'm not going to be held back any longer by the enemy. And I hope you aren't. Will you stand with me and pray? Because this is United in Purpose Conference. Yes. And when Jesus said, the gates of hell cannot prevail, you know an army single in purpose and single together can destroy fully. Yeah. 
It's an enemy divided, or us divided, which has problems. Let's just stand and declare our unity and purpose. Oh, come, George. Come, come up with me. Hallelujah. Let's stand together in this, I, I believe. Is that okay? Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have brought us freedom. That by your grace we overpower every scheme of the enemy. We repent and we turn against those situations and those words from our own mouth which bring contention, strife and quarreling. And we step forward together unified, unified in purpose, hallelujah, to bring fruitfulness for your kingdom, hallelujah Lord, we speak out and say we will see good fruit, we will reach everybody in every place, at every time, by every possible means, hallelujah, we will teach people to become Christ-like and mobilize this army Lord, that the darkness will quake, that the darkness will shudder, that the darkness will run as we bring light to every situation, every place, every family in every home. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for the vision that's begun with Victory Churches International. And thank you that we will bring living water and feast upon your living water for refreshment eternally, forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, George. Thank you, George. Thank you, George. Bless you. much. It's great when you have, uh, this morning you get the chance to hear Carl minister. He's a man full of life, uh, full of the word, and uh, he doesn't need to apologize for his apologetics. No, he is, uh, he is a man who can stand his ground with the, the world, and he wins because Jesus is the winner. Hallelujah. It's great to have him here this morning. One of the other joys this morning is, and I'm going to take a five-minute break, and then I think Sam's going to do something on missions for me. Are you doing something in mission here? Yep, I've got it right. Okay, somewhere around there. And then Michael's going to speak this morning as well. And it's great that you get the chance to hear him speak. If you haven't heard Michael speak before, you're in for a treat. We uh, really enjoy his ministry here in church. It'll be a great time. Hallelujah. So five minutes break, and then we'll be back. Michael will call things to order, and uh, then we'll make a start. Okay, God bless.